Oh hello! We get to talk about my favourite quad today, the little Aurora 100, which I love. Unfortunately though, as you might have uh, inferred from the title, it, it died. What happened is I was out with Neil and we were having a great old time just racing around uh, these trees. We made ourselves a little track which goes all behind the trees and then around uh, these sort of, I would guess you call them little trails, completely surrounded by trees but plenty of space to fly. Neil went and he lost some signal there because his antenna wasn't in a great state and he broke a leg clean off his Aurora. Um, I did a bunch more laps and then I crashed on an unknown branch and killed my roar. I mean it's not the worst thing ever. It is splinted on this leg. If you can see it's uh, it's not bending the right way and it's got a uh, a break here. I can't have my favourite little quad dead. I need I need it running. This is so good, so much fun. Now, the problem of the Aurora body has kind of been known from the get-go. It's 1.5mm carbon here and it's pretty flexy. So, two options available to you instantly and that is EA Sheen, the producers, also have a 2mm and a 2.5 version of the base plate. Quite why they didn't ship this with the, the quad at the time is anyone's business. I guess they thought it would be okay and then a bunch broke and they bought different ones out. So I could do that but a couple of guys have suggested the Fira or Fira 110 frame which is this little guy here um, as a drop-in replacement and it actually uses 2.5mm carbon fibre and it is um, significantly less bendy. So I thought um, I'd put the Aurora 100 into a Fira 110 frame and we'll see how that goes. Um, if I don't like it, I can always get a new base plate for this one. If it looks good, then I've got a couple of other expansion possibilities. Yeah, I just thought I'd go through this and sort of treat this as a review, if you like, of this frame. See if it's a worthy upgrade to the uh, Aurora 100. Because ultimately, um, it needs to fly like it's always flown, because I love the way it flies. If it carries on flying like that, brilliant, I've put it in a better frame and I've still got some more ideas for a couple of other upgrades if that all goes well. So join me and we'll convert it over and see what happens. And welcome back to the day. I hope you can see me here because I'm obviously very camouflaged if my body's missing completely. So we put the quad together in the fear frame and here it is. Now it's not quite a drop-in replacement. There are a couple of um, things you had to do and some of them are a bit of a pain. One of which is the motor wires were just coming up between 10 and 20 mil short and that is such a pain because you have to make a joint and then cover the joint in shrink wrap and then that's not as lovely and flexible as the silicon stuff but you know that's all in there and it's looking fairly neat um, the other thing is although this frame has a piece here to kind of protect the skew because the skew is kind of offset from the center it's up against the side of that now obviously carbon fiber is conductive uh, I don't know if it has an effect on that. We'll we'll find out. It it could be it could be better. Um, and lastly, in order to get the LED on the back, the I mean this this is actually a problem. This is the original raw frame, and you see we've got these square pegs here, which we're literally trying to push a square peg into a round hole on here. So these square pegs, because they're two point five mils, are significantly thicker than these ones. So these just needed cutting down to cut the edges off and filing filing out to get pushed on and then they're held in with a little bit of epoxy. Um, yeah, so it should be okay. But yeah, it's not quite a drop in placement and there are a little, little few downsides. I mean, the fact that um, your skew is touching and your motor wires have to be lengthened and you've had to mess about with this, it no longer fits in the box, the original Aurora box to take it around, which I found quite useful. Uh, but that just could be a case of me making my own box for it. Uh, it feels, I don't know if it's heavy, it's going to be a little bit heavy obviously. And in comparison to the old one, it feels absolutely giant. Now this just could be because I stripped everything out and this now weighs, it's like a feather, there's nothing to it. But yeah, it feels a little bit different, but um, you know, let's find out how it flies. 
th there's a reason to stick with it um, at the moment for a potential upgrade coming up. But let's let's fly it first because if it doesn't fly, then there's no point in moving any further. Right, it's gonna fly. It's gonna. It, the question is, it's gonna fly like it did before. So will it fly? Let's jump cut to the field, which is possibly not today if this t-shirt changes yet again, and uh, find out. See you in a bit. So we're up in the air and the great news is that I can't really feel the difference. It feels just like the Aurora 100 did. But there are a few differences and I mention them now because I forgot to mention them in the wrap up a bit later. You will notice there's now props on display which weren't visible previously. So the frame has changed shape in such a way that the props now show up. Which is interesting because when I looked at it before I thought, no, that won't happen. But yeah, the camera was jutting out a little bit further forward previously. And this one's more set back so you can pick up the props. It's not a big deal for me, but um, it could be for some other people, so I thought I'd mention it. I am getting a lot of video breakup here. And I wasn't sure if this was because there were the trees, or it was touching the frame, or just a skew was knackered. But we'll come back to that later. But yeah, as far as the flying goes, despite what I perceive as being a little bit of extra weight, it had the punch, it was still nimble and really agile in the air. Absolutely no problems at all. So, you know, happiness is here so far. So what about the case of, well, okay, it's a new frame, is it a strong frame? Well, to test this out, I decided to ram a tree. Well, no, that's not true, is it? I tried to go through a tree gap and it failed hideously. This is pretty thick bush. <laughs> I thought I'd just show this bit because from the air it looks like quite easy stuff to get through but it was thick bramble um, and it was really tough going. I was only pleased that well it was beeping mentally and the battery was still in there else I think I would have just given up trying to find it through this lot really thick so as always careful where you fly these things well I always like to provide a public service and crash into a tree just to see how the frame is and uh, I think you'll see from the damage sustained by the props it pretty much went full on there just looking back at the footage I'm not quite sure how it was going to fit looking at the line of trees I think I just got so um, sort of distracted by the fact there were multiple sort of gaps that I needed to miss the one on the left and go for one on the right and forgot to line up and just cracked into it. Now, frame wise, nothing nothing broken, nothing scratched. So strength wise it's looking pretty good and it still hasn't got of course that much um, weight behind it. So whenever it cracks something it just bounces off. Now the reason I didn't carry on flying this is because I seem to have cracked something which has shorted the beeper. It's still doing the normal beepy noise underneath, but I think something's jolted and is, is getting it to go all the time. Which is brilliant for finding it, but not so good for flying it, so I didn't continue. But uh, let's just track that down now and then we'll uh, finish off. Well, that was a, a pretty quick fix. It, um, plug it in now. That's a better noise, isn't it? Uh, all it was was, I think, bits of wet grass that got into uh, the flight controller and was shorting out. I used an old toothbrush. Just scrape away, I took the top plate off, gave it a rub down and it was all good. Whilst I had the top off though, I took a quick look at the skew to see if I could work out why I was getting quite a lot of interference. I mean, there were trees around and stuff, but it looked a bit more than normal. And I in fact found that um, the two lobes, the bit here, had separated. I will show a close-up of this, but these, this lobe and this lobe are held together with this little thing that got squashed and separated. I think that was from the previous crash. Um, so I had um, a bunch of these other skews to replace, so I've just soldered this one on. It's still very difficult to get this in, having twisted it and angled it. It's in there nicely and it's all back together and that's flying okay once again. Uh, shame I lost uh, a couple of flights on this because I had to come back and sort it out. 
but yeah it's all up together and working okay. But uh, we were trying out some of these um, I don't know how to pronounce them, Goneng, these uh, 550 batteries. Neil, my, my friend who, who bust ears at the same time of mine, had problems getting the original EA Sheen ones. So he got a couple of these and he, he ordered some extra, so I, I got some off him as well. And these seem pretty good. They're, on my scales, two grams heavier than these. This says 550, this says 450. They do about the same in terms of power, and it depends if you're really thrashing or not. Three, three and a half minutes on each. So I figure that's quite a good alternative if you're having trouble getting hold of these, which seem pretty good. Um, if you're using different cheapo batteries which really work well uh, please let me know because I feel like I need to go out with like 20 or 30 of these to get the most from my Aurora. So the question is would I recommend um, swapping over from your normal Aurora frame, broken one here, to the Fira or Fira 110 frame? And the answer is as a straight swap no it's it's more hassle than it's worth. I mean it's very strong, um, it's got much stronger than the Aurora all the way through because of these extra struts, how they all interconnect to themselves. But it doesn't necessarily need to be. And you've got hassles like lengthening the cables, drilling out to get this on, getting yourself uh, extra screws to get the motors in. Uh, by the way, Neil ordered uh, the 2.5mm Aurora base plate and it actually comes with the right screws to put it on so you don't need to do that. Um, and hassles fit in the skew in. The reason I'm going with this one um, and it's the reason I thought about it from the start is because there's two weaknesses on the original Aurora. One of which we know about is the frame. Too, too thin. Why they didn't just release it with the 2.5mm base plate is anyone's business. The other, and it's a general issue with all micro quads or these inbuilt VTX uh, cameras, the camera's not very good. It's, you know, it's a CMOS sensor, it's all very miniature, it does the job, but it could be better. And you really notice it with these little micro quads on sort of gloomier days or going through shadows. If the sun's out and it's glorious, you'll have a great experience. Less than that though, the picture gets grainy, it gets worse. So what can we do? And the answer is the Runcam Rikers Rift. On the original Aurora frame, it is too wide to get in there. Now, it's possible that you could take these off and get it in there somehow, but with this frame being quite thin, these side bits here that hold a camera tend to be a little bit more structural. This this might be flapping around a bit. So I, mean, I, I think it's possible to do. If you took that off, you had the right bits in there and you got it in, you could do it. Of course, you have to fit a VTX as well. And I'll be using the, the tiny Eachine VX03, which just goes on the back of this. Um, the difference between that, where it doesn't fit, and the Fira frame, it's wider. It will fit in there, literally. And there's enough space there to put the TX03 behind it. And the TX03 has also got a linear dipole that comes up, so we won't have the problems with the skew. I'm still not convinced that that's going to give a good picture, uh, but I think it's worth trying it. Now, the reason it's not on for this review is um, this is actually the one with the 2.3 lens, and my idea was I was going to go and show the 2.1 versus 2.3 on a different quad. But the 2.3 lens I've got, Runcam found them to be faulty and you've got some shaking in the picture. So a new one is on the way and after I then get that onto the uh, was it, 210, 220 size quad, fly the same course with the 2.1 and the 2.3 lens, I'll put the 2.1 lens onto this and we'll see if we can have a micro quad experience with a really nice picture where you don't have to worry about lighting conditions and it's got a lovely wide dynamic range in it. But yeah, there you go. Um, that's the frame. It's a nice frame, but I wouldn't bother unless you specifically wanted to upgrade your camera. Just go with the thicker version of that. That's it for now. I will see you in the next one. Bye.